We're at Starbucks again. Actually, you know what? It's not a secret anymore. It's not a secret. I'm letting the world know. I go to Starbucks. See, that wasn't so hard to say. I go to Starbucks. Cheers to a whole new world. Timmy's, your lineups are too long. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and it's, it's very difficult to get to Timmy's now as well. I think I explained this in other days. Uh, the Timmy's in town is uh, it's got road construction all around it and it's not their fault. It's not their fault at all. But I go through the drive through here at Starbucks and they, they answer like, hey, how was your day? Oh yeah, what you up to today? And they like start a conversation. It's like they want to be your friend. And maybe it's like that in other places too, at other places, but here in Steinbeck, they just seem really, really friendly. Like, like I've said in past videos. So, you know, that goes a long way to gaining my business. I'm not a morning person by any means. Until I get my coffee, uh, I'm, I'd rather not be around. I'd rather be sleeping still. But, you know, I get my coffee. And if you make it a positive experience getting my coffee, man, that makes my day go by so much better. You know, it starts it off on a good day. It's going to be a good day regardless, but now it's going to be a great day. Well, we just got here, and uh, I went to grab the mail this morning just because we've been forgetting the last couple of days. So I went and grabbed it, and well, well, looky here, looky here. It's time for Trucker Josh to go in for his driver fitness physical exam. We have to do this every five years, I believe. I got to complete a physical exam to make sure I'm still healthy enough to drive a semi truck. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just I hate I hate being told I got to go see the doctor. <laughs> so what they do is they check my cardio health, uh, metabolic, uh, or check for metabolic disease, uh, musculoskeletal disease, nervous system disease, psychiatric disease, or renal disease, respiratory disease, uh, diseases of the senses, and any other conditions. Uh, check your cardiac system, check for diabetes, uh, d d d anything. Anything that could possibly, uh, anything that could possibly get in the way of me safely operating a tractor trailer on the highway. So it's actually, it's a good thing, is to, it's to protect all of you on the road. Because I know I'm healthy, I'm not gonna have a problem passing this, but uh, there's a lot of people out there that may uh, be a danger when they're behind the wheel uh, because of their health, unfortunately. It's something that they can't control and it's, it's tough to tell them that, hey, I'm sorry, you can't be a truck driver because of this health condition. It's, it's a very tough call. I'm glad I don't gotta do that. I'm glad I don't gotta make those decisions and tell people that because that'd be very tough for me. Uh, it'd be very, very tough for me to hear that if, uh, if my health were to ever decline, um, you know, the trucking is what I do. It's who I am. It's what I love. It's what I grew up around. It's all I know. I don't know anything else. And being told by a doctor that, sorry, that's over, would be, uh, oh, it would be crushing. But it is for the safety of everybody on the road. And uh, at my age, I have to do it every five years. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section. Um, every five years the Manitoba or uh, yeah my Manitoba health like our, our health system here they will send out these letters to remind you uh, so 2021 so my next one will be in 2026 but I'll have to it's my responsibility to make an appointment and my responsibility to show up there for the appointment and then my doctor fills out this paper that I have here and sends it in and then as long as I get the green light everything's good to go I'm still missing one of my horns. I don't know if I'm gonna get that back. <laughs> These trucks back in the day used to have four horns up there. One of our city trucks still has all nice, has it all set up all nice with the four horns. But uh, I only got one because the other one fell off last week and it hasn't been put back on yet. We'll see if they put it back on or not. I guess not a big deal. I hope they do. All right, so we have air in all of our tires, right? 
Now I want to talk to you about this lift axle back here. Do you see anything wrong with this situation right here? When you have your axle lifted off the ground like this, sometimes it still touches and uh, there's no brakes on it, right? It still turns. You have to be very careful when you have your axle up that these are nowhere near it, right? You want to get these far away from it. Slide them far away. It's best to bungee them up, up there or right at the back there so that it doesn't slide back while you're driving. Otherwise, when you go over a bridge connection and the trailer goes, you know, suspension goes up and down over the bridge, this tire touches the ground, starts turning. If that thing is sitting right here, it's gonna chew right into the tire. And then you're completely defeating the purpose of having the axle lifted in the first place. Unless if you're just lifting it to save money on tolls. But for us, we don't have tolls around here. We lift this to save the tire so that we don't have to replace it as often. But if you're gonna have your winch right here, digging into your tire every time you go over a bridge, well, you're defeating the purpose, like I said, and you're gonna have to uh, replace your tires even sooner than if you had just left it down. Just make sure that that's not ever gonna be a problem there. Make sure they stay far away from it. Other than that, all of our uh, lights should be working. Everything's looking good. Same thing on this side. You wanna make sure that these winches stay far away from that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag them all the way up there yet and put a bungee on them so that it holds them up there. And then we'll be off. Make sure you have your bar in here. I usually have a bungee on this too, just in case if this doesn't hold. I don't like to rely just on this little thing here. Put a bungee in there just to hold it up there just in case that fails. I always like to have fail safes everywhere, just in case if one thing fails, there should always be a backup securement on everything. And just so you know what I'm talking about here with the bungee, for this bar, see this bar sits in here, all the way in there. So you wanna keep it in there. First of all, I bring all of these right up against here, so that that can't, it can't go any further that way, right? And then this, main securement is in here but your secondary securement is not this because those can slide even if you bungee them here i got this bungee hooked up to there so that holds this thing in here you don't want to lose this into traffic that wouldn't be good you don't want to lose anything into traffic you don't want to lose anything off your load you never ever want anything to fall off your truck whether it's part of the load or part of the truck itself or trailer itself always make sure and secure everything absolutely everything and then look at it and think huh if that securement fails what's holding it on the truck what's holding it on the trailer there should always be a backup securement to everything just in case and maybe there should be a backup for the backup that's up to you simple day there and back today Arburg and back Tomorrow I'm taking out the picker truck, the boom truck, the blue truck over there. I've got two loads of logs to deliver. Got one load of logs going up to Asher in Manitoba, one load going to Steinbach. I'm gonna have to start a little uh, earlier than usual tomorrow. So that means I'm going home, having supper, getting ready for bed. Try to get to sleep earlier today. Oops, oops. There we go. So I gotta get here early enough tomorrow. I've gotta move a few things over from 3006 to 3106. Just like my hard hat, uh, you know, my, my chargers and stuff. Just so I'm ready for the day. And uh, we'll see. I gotta, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, it's making so much noise. Let's get this window cleared first. There we go. See? 
I'm hoping they're gonna put that horn back on the top of my truck yet. <laughs> this is not that big a deal though. But I have mentioned it twice today in the vlog though. I haven't mentioned it to them. I, I did when we first, uh, or when I first brought the truck in, they just had to cut the airline on it just cause it was like hanging off and I didn't want it flying out into traffic. And I was, saying, I was hope, hoping we can put it back on there eventually, but they probably have to order in specific mounts for it for the top of the truck, I'm, so I'm guessing. It's not like we'd have a bunch of those lying around. And how often do the horns fall off? Have I ever shown you guys yet, or have I shown you the finished deck? There it is. I don't show the front of the house that much, so I guess I forgot to show you guys the finished work. I'm not quite finished yet. I mean, from here, I've still got to build a, a step right here. It'll be about, uh, well, three boards wide, so it'll be a pretty wide step. That'll come out here and rest onto the concrete. You can see exactly where the old step was already on the house. I've got to build that yet. Better than that, yeah. That are all done. I'll give you a look here without the fisheye lens. So you can actually... There we go. See, and then the, the step has got to be over here yet. Realize that fisheye lens was kind of distorting it, like usual. First deck I've ever built by myself. Hey boys. Hey. You miss me? Oh my. Oh. Diesel. Oh. You okay? You Commander? Commander didn't miss me. He just wants to go out. <laughs> Wiener? Wiener, where'd you go? There he is. Yeah. Diesel's quickly grabbing some water. Hey, buddy. Hey, guys. Come on, let's go outside. Come on. Don't step on the wiener. Don't step on the wiener. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Oh, and look at all these apples on the ground again. So many. This is just from today. Oh, we're gonna have to start harvesting these. Yikes. I don't know what Britt wants to do with them. I don't know, do we eat them? Can we just eat them? Right off the tree? I've never had an apple tree before, I don't know. Oh, they're huge. Yikes. Everywhere. All over here. Yes, I'm gonna Google it. You can laugh at me if you want. Can I eat apples off my tree? Can you forage for and use wild apples? Have you ever? The short answer is yes, they should be safe to eat. Should be. You eat apples straight from the tree? The apples growing on your tree should be safe to eat, but throw away any fruit laying on the ground. It won't hurt your tree, but the salts will leave burn marks in your lawn. What lawn? Although you your tree won't absorb any toxin from them, your dog's feces are more serious. Ah, I get it. The dogs might have uh, peed on the ones on the ground. This one I grabbed off the branch. That's really good. That's really good. Mm, I, I bit into the core a little bit there. Mm. It's 
I'm gonna go have more. You guys wanna come? I'm gonna go eat some apples. Okay, well the rules are you just don't eat them on the ground. So I guess we're just gonna have to eat them all before they hit the ground. Hmm. That was good. Oh, it falls off so easy. Mm. Yep. I like my apple tree. And to think all the ones laying on the ground right now are wasted. I better make a point of picking all the rest of these apples off soon. You like apples too, don't you? Mm. 